Hello, and uh, welcome back. Well, our next objective is to deliver a bomb. That's fine. Begin scan. Have a pleasant journey. I definitely love doing this. Who doesn't like delivering bombs? All right. So where are we going? We're going this way. Apparently they're having an issue with a tar-like substance, which I guess is kind of like where you throw the contaminated stuff in. So they're having a problem with that. And uh, this bomb is apparently supposed to help. It's anti-matter. And uh, we gotta be very, 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 very careful with it because it's gonna go boom and we're gonna live to regret it. Well, not live to regret it. Well. Wait, we come back to life. So yeah, we would live to regret it if this went off. But I don't know how the terrain is, so I don't know if a vehicle would be good. Then again, it said, um, this isn't suited for long distance and not to be bumpy. And I think a vehicle would be pretty bumpy. So, uh, I'm just gonna... Take it easy. And, uh, oh god, I'm so worried. Like, butterflies. It's so interesting that you could. I hear frogs. I hear life. Wait. Let's go. Dear. Well, I do hear froggies. I should have bought a ladder. Knowing that this area was kind of swampy. Oh boy. This is bad. I, well, I should go back and get something then. Well, I guess this spot's fine. Listen, my stress levels are really bad too, so, um, you're just gonna have to calm down, kid. So yeah, we're fine. I should've bought a ladder. I didn't know I was gonna have to go all the way around like that, but it's fine. I got PCPs, but no, that's about it. Yeah, why not pick it up? So, uh, something is... So, Edgenaut City is gone. Uh, that's gonna be a problem, I guess. Nice. Because, uh... Yeah, that's just... The city is apparently gone, but then again... I don't know, I feel like something's a little fishy. I don't know, something doesn't sit right with me like that. This feels like a BT area, it really does. Novelist son? I haven't met that person. <gasps> oh, here we go. There we go. I see a, um... I wonder if that's going to be mule territory or... Hmm. Oh good, it's mule territory. Wonderful. That's exactly what I need in my life. I guess I'll pick this up. I don't know where this person's at, but I'll pick it up anyways. That's, uh, awkward. Okay, let's just adjust it. Maybe we can go all the way around. Right?
Listen, I'm willing to take the longer road if it means going around mule territory. But at least they're mules, they're not terrorists. What was that noise? Easy now, we gotta be careful. You should have more faith in yourself. Hey, I mean, you know. I got plenty of faith. Listen, it's fine. As long as we don't blow this bomb up, we are golden. Well, now I see why you wanted me to make armored plates. <coughs> um. I thought I'd be fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. Down in there. Hear a storm. Is that bad? Why does it sound so creepy? Like, I hear things just going through the trees. The trees are creaking and the sound, the ambience is kind of creepy too. Easy, easy, easy. Okay, easy, okay. Okay. And up we go. And up we go. See, this is fine. It's fine. Is that a cave? That's a cave. What's in the cave? Only gonna get harder. Is that how I get to there? I don't know. Why is there a cake? I'm curious. I mean, we're not on a timer. We just gotta make sure we don't break it. And it makes it, make it, go, make it go boom. But there's a cave. I wanna see what the cave. Cave, man. Is that a cave? Looks like a cave. Nah, it's nothing. But. Okay, no, um. I guess if there's time fall, that's a good place to wait out the time fall. They said to find places to hide from the rain. So I guess that, I guess it, that would be a good place to hide. Give me that, and uh, up we go. Oh boy. Sounds very terrible. Hey, BB, how you doing? Listen, BB. We got ourselves a horrible situation. Let's get this show on the road. We gotta take our time, okay? We are in the mountains. The mountains. Alright. I think it's fine. It's... Oh god, it is snow. Okay, so snow is not bad. Snow just drains your stamina. Damn, we gotta take it easy. How much further is it? <laughs> yep. Okay, so... Sam, stop it, Sam. Great. 
Great. Great. We'll go around. How about that? Alright, let's just, uh... Let's just, uh... It's fine. So I thought snow might be like time fall as well, but I guess snow isn't like that. That's why the mountains are fine. Easy. Easy. Cool. Oh, what is down there? Oh god, where are we going? Um. It's fine, right? Oh boy. Okay, it's like over there. It's fine. Alright. So I wonder why rain is the only thing that's affected then. And didn't they say it turns to normal after, a, like it turns to normal water? At least I, I think, I, oh, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Down we go. go and then up we go this isn't so bad oh who am I kidding this is t absolutely dreadful okay I think I'm gonna make it oh boy it's pretty though it's all sparkly all right where is it now Dear God. Dear God. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. That is just... I should have brought an anchor. I should have, you know, mountains. You should have. Ugh. I'm an idiot. Why do I play this? Oh, it's kind of fun. But uh, I'm an idiot. Let's just rest on this rock. Easy now. Easy now. Bomb on board. Bomb on board. Easy, easy, easy. What was that? I don't know. Anyways, let's go. Oh. Hey, look at that. Okay. Oh, God. Okay. Uh huh. See, it's fine. We just gotta take it easy. Well, look at that. Woo. Hey, we did it. Chemicals. What are the chemicals going to be for? Okay, river's fine. BB might not like it, but whatever. Rain coming again, I guess. Guess I'll pick these up. I don't know what I'm gonna be using them for, but 
Okay. Off we go. More rain. that noise. I wonder if anything could adapt to the time fall. Like eventually. To where it won't age. Like, that, that's all... That's the thing about life is that it... There's a situation going on in this place. This is fine. I got the bomb. Do I have to throw it myself? Beginning scan. Scanning bridges ID. Verifying ID. Clear. Weapons detected. All weapons will be locked until departure. Cargo verified. Thank you. Heck, where am I going? Excuse me, where am I going with this? Excuse me. Oh, here we are. I made it. Contaminating suit. <laughs> All clear. Welcome, Sam Porter Bridges. Happy to be here. With your bomb. And this one's intentional. What did you do? Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> oh God! It's fine though. Hey. How do you think you're doing, Bridges? That network you're building is carrying some nasty stuff. Stuff nobody would want anywhere near them. I thought you people would figure that out by now. We want no part of your chiral network or the UCA. That voice. Is that you, Mama? Uh, you hit your head there, Mama? I'm not yours, and yours is no kind of mother. All right. Enough games, Mama. <laughs> I don't think you heard me, mister. Mountain Hot City is telling you and the UCA to take a hike. Does she have a sister? You people keep doing what you're doing, and you're gonna put us right back on the road to the Death Stranding. We didn't ask for you to come and tell us how to live our lives. We'll decide that for ourselves. Thank you very much. All we want from you is the occasional delivery. Nothing else. So you speak for the city. That's right. I'm in charge. The name's Lochna. Lochna? Hold up. I, I need to talk to you. You're a technician, right? Look, go home and don't come back. Listen to me, damn it. I need your help. Well, we don't need yours, Bridges. You're only making things worse. Oh my jeez. Lady, bite me. Suck a lemon. Sorry you had to deal with that, Sam. She's the boss over there, and she's not afraid to lay down the law. Warning! Please, a warning. Need her people. We've lost too many others as it is. Without Mountain Knot City, the Cairo Network and the UCA will never be complete. What now? So, here's the thing. Oh god, what do I gotta do? Sam, Lachna is Mama's twin sister. Not so. Former Bridges One. Went west with the others. Second group, just like Mama. Mama's not her real name, of course. That'd be Malingan. Both have dooms and both are scientific geniuses. Mama's primary field of expertise is applied physics. Lachna's is theoretical. Mama designed the Cupid hardware. Lochna, the software. 
They said they could converse over any distance. Said they had a special bond that led them. I don't know how that's possible, but I'll tell you this. There wouldn't be a chiral network without them. They were so close that some said they were like one person in two bodies. Might be why they were able to develop the Cupid. But they had a falling out after Molingen's accident. Lochner left bridges and cut off all contact with us. I don't know what happened between them. It could be the we fact that her Lachner baby around. is a BT. Our plans to make America whole again are finished. Not that I'm asking you to stick your nose in their personal business. Oh my god. Though if you did, it might help us figure out how to bring Lochner around. <sighs> Fine. Because our plans to make America whole again are finished without her. Oh, the people's meantime, personal problems. You got any bright ideas? Feel free to give them a shot. I don't know. I don't know Good family time. drama. Oh my god. Uh, you want another pizza? Why? I'm done. I'm done. All of you. I'm done with all of you. You want another pizza? We want pizza from where? Oh my god. Fine, I do it. Later. Good news. Mm, could you go talk to mom about it? You want me to go all the way back? Oh my god. <sighs> oh god. Okay, hold on. My eye. There's just my eye. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. All of you. All of you are annoying. I am one person. I'm trying to make deliveries. What do we got here? The situation at the first... Yeah, let's, let's read something interesting, I guess. Okay. There was a series of huge explosions. Well, not so much a series. They were simultaneously worldwide. The global comms infrastructure was shot to hell, but we salvaged what we could, trying to make sense of what had happened. So this was worldwide. I mean, they keep talking about America, and I'm just like, what about the other countries? Oh my god. Excuse me. Okay. It didn't seem like much at the time, but there was a hell of a lot better than we have now. Anyway, the government figured the whole thing was a terrorist attack at first, that we'd, be, we'd been dealing with a lot of those back then, but it didn't take long to see that it was something else. It, the craters left by the blast were bizarre. There was no rubble, no dust, even which led scientists to rule out meteor strikes. There was a trace of neutron radiation, alpha rays, but we knew it wasn't nukes either. Some of the particles we detected we've never even seen before, chiralium. Although we didn't know it at the time, the more we studied, the more scientists became to same conclusion. The results of the annihilation events. It was right about the time that chiral clouds started to form, and after that, all communication to the outside world was down for good. Hmm. No blue in the inverted rainbow. We humans are complex, multicellular organisms. Sixty trillion cells each, and inside each one of us, they say. How many of those cells need to die for us to consider for us to consider a dead person? Are there any cells in particular which determine whether a person's alive or dead? These questions are academic, of course. To the exact point of death can be calculated using cell counts. On the other hand, no one can deny the existence of degradation diseases that gradually destroy more and more cells, leaving the victim effectively half dead. And what about me? Most of my organs have been harvested from other people. They still work, of course, but their original owner have been said to be alive, I really don't know. Incidentally, have you ever heard of a fun little experiment they once did with roundworms called C. elgins? These creatures are noble for glowing bright blue when exposed to UV light, but only when they die. It seems to be a reaction of high acid and then the organism known as death fluorescence. Yep. That's right. Blue is very much the color of death, it seems. Can it therefore be a coincidence that there is no blue in the inverted rainbow? Time fall strengthens an area's connection to the beach. This is something to do with the chiral particles become excited, I believe, in spaces connected to the beach. Electromagnetic waves within blue 
Wavelengths can travel easily through the scene, linking onto the beach. Some people think that's where the blue from the inverted rainbow goes. Who knows? The fact that the blue has a strong connection to death, though, it seems pretty inarguable. Hmm. The history of the Otter Deck. I wonder if I get to meet Hartman then. I mean, we met Mama. I want to meet him. He seems nice. Does the name Sigmund Freud mean anything to you? Not really. He was a famous psychologist. Most famous of the monk, perhaps, but I digress. He formulated one of the most, one of his most famous theories after observing his grandson playing with a spool of thread. The boy would throw the spool under the bed, thus ensuring that he could not see it anymore, and then he would wind up the thread in his hand, gradually drawing the spool back towards him until it became visible again. He repeated this process several times. It was apparently a game he played when his mother was elsewhere. He proposed that the process of concealing and rediscovering the spool was a coping mechanism, a way in which the boy could put his mind to ease. You see, the boy was in control of the spool. He can make it disappear and reappear at will. This helped him co to comprehend his mother's absence not as something sudden or irrational, but as something controlled, therefore not a cause of concern. A novelist named Franz Kifka later coined the term for the spool thread the otter deck. However, he conceived that it was capable of speech and autonomous movement, a mysterious being neither dead nor alive. The otter decks we use are perhaps not so different. These interfer interfaces in which we experience our BB's perception and the surroundings are not like un unlike spools of thread or connection between our world and the other side, the living and the dead, human and BB. Near death experience. One year ago. So, I'm like, so three years ago they started doing some stuff? I just want to know how long the stranding has been around. Because there was this one guy that said he was born in a shelter and the walls of the shelter is all he's ever known. So... It has to be long enough for somebody to grow up into it. But maybe they lived with it for a while and then three years ago they started figuring out stuff. Maybe. I don't know. Until relatively recently, death could only be studied from a perspective of an external observer as experience of one's own death could not be communicated to another. A collaborative investigation of the phenomenon was fundamentally impossible, but through the examination of subjects in near-death states and cataloging their experiences, we have at least been able to bring the scientific method to bear on this most final frontiers. Even those in the state of so-called brain death exhibit signs of consciousness. What could this possibly mean? Moreover, why do some think the brink of death report out-of-body experience? Furthermore, why do so many of those who have such experiences describe the same sensation of being beckoned towards a distant light? Many argued that the commonalities of where evidence of an objective reality of a place beyond life, if nothing else, they at least suggest that death was not an incitation change of states but a process. The breach has since proved as much of beyond a doubt, and the dead rising again as BTs through necrosis demonstrates the process of an action. The place beyond life is no longer theoretically a possibility, its existence must be taken in control Inconvertible fact. Okay, cool. Evolution, death stranding, and the fear of dying. Death has been Ho Sapiens' constant companion for every step of our evolutionary journey. Our cultures and our civilizations have been built with an awareness of our relationship with death. To the extent to which we can accept and live with it, out of fear of the inevitable of decomposition and destruction of the flesh, our ancestors developed an elaborate embalming technique, death mask and the like. Indeed the mask has never as indeed the mask has ever been a symbol of the soul that transcends this world to the existence for eternity into the next. The mummies and sarcophagi of ancient Egypt are but one instance of this. 
honored individuals were given masks and placed inside the sarcophagi in order to preserve it for eternity, thereby transcending death and attaining immortality. Paintings and photographs are no different, really. They are simply more modern variants of the Egyptian's mask and the sarcophagi. Indeed, all of humanity's crowning achievements, art, language, writing, and arguably a reaction to death, and an experience of our desires to overcome it, they are great threats born from fear, and one might even go as far as say as there were primal, primal fear of death to drove the evolution of our ancestors into Hobie Spaceians in the first place. In fact, I would go further still. I would present that this that it was this fear that brought about the death training itself. It has certainly seemed one more plausible of the late. Oh, like, you know, maybe some guy wanted to bring his wife back to life, maybe. You know, just a theory. Let's see. Okay, nobody can. Unknown man's journal. Okay. Writ writing year unknown. Un unknown. Okay. Ha and Ka, body and soul, to become separated, you die in this world at least. That death ain't the end though, so as long as your soul's got a body to come back to, you can be re reborn. Resuscitated anyway. That's why people built coffins and sarcophagi to preserve the body so the soul had a home it could return to. I learned all this and more from an old book I found, The Wisdoms of Egyptians, chock full of interesting tidbits about knowing about death and how to overcome it, like golden masks, like the golden mask of the pharaohs, the ones decorated using magical adornments as an intricate Intrication of the wearer's prestige and power. I tell you what, if I've learned anything from the beach is that the Egyptians had it all figured out. That's why I've decided to give myself a mask. Not a mask of depth though, but one for living, one for ruling. Today is the last day anyone sees my face. I don't need it anymore. Didn't Higgs say he doesn't really like his face and that he hides it? Okay, well, these are gonna be interesting. Yeah, oh, let's just let's just take a look. Okay, a British way station out west got taken out by terrorists. Use a void out to do it. They dumped a corpse nearby to let it go. Necro dropping BTs right into people's laps. Word is demons heard bridges heard that bridges was sending an expert force out west to facilitate the reconstruction of America and some such guess they didn't take a kindly terrorists, separatists, isolationists all these folks claim America is coming for their freedom that the old guard wants to put them in change make, make the individual subservient to the collection they ask why they ask what it's all for in a post-stranding world when today's triumph is tomorrow's crater. Daddy used to sprawl the same tired line, said America never did nothing for nobody. And that's why we took to the living and shelter better down a hole than out there under their thumb. Yeah, he was a real shit, my daddy. Tried to run a few times, but he just dragged me back inside, kicking and screaming where he put those heavy hands to work and reminded me that if I disrespected his authority, but that's love, isn't it? His way of looking after an orphan child he raised as his own. He was trying to protect me from the evils of the outside world. I owe him my life, my powers too. For the first time, the first time I ever sensed a BT was when I held him moments before he went necro. Just like that, I dumped that prepper's body. My daddy showed me the corpse. Corpses are precious, powerful things. They're so much more than bombs. Terrorists th treat them with proper respect. Huh. I've had us team up with a bunch of pro protesters who service the central part of the country. It had to be done. The writing was on the wall from my crew otherwise. And guess what? Their leaders got dooms. 
I got a feeling we're going to be good friends. Demons and terrorists have been getting more aggressive since Bridges' expedition team set out. As of the D D BTs and mules weren't enough, now we've got to keep our eyes peeled for those assholes make when making runs. All the more reason we've got to come together, get organized. Me and my new partner, we've been talking about co operations so we can take cover the whole continent. If we do, I suppose that make us like the UCA in some respects. Different structure and methods, but similar ideology. A deep and abiding belief in the importance of community. But the devil's in the details, isn't it? Role structures can't just let people make decisions for themselves, and therein lies the risk. Can't have us repeating the same sins of the past, and with another USA and the demons, well, they ain't about to come think for themselves. At the end of the day, community needs a strong leader, and God's on a shoot that is I'm the only one cut out for it. Huh. The rumors I've heard about my new partner's powers don't do her justice. I know she had dooms, but it's on a whole new level. I tell you, I've never seen anything like it. Not only can she perceive BTs, but she can actually use the beach. Compared to hers, my powers are nothing. Parlor tricks, courtesy of a few corpses. But it doesn't matter, not so as long as I've got her. Before I met, I was bound to the limitations of my abilities. I was a blind man groping for the shadows of the secret realm. But now, because of her, I can actually go to the beach. The beach. With her by my side, I can reshape the world. Not into what it was, the old USA. Not like Bridges wants. Something new. Something everlasting. Here. Now. A world where we are free to do whatever we goddamn please. Yeah, this is, this is Higgs, isn't it? My partner's powers are extraordinary, sure, but deep down I know the two of us alone don't have what it takes to bring true, lasting freedom to people. Everything we've done, everything we continue to do, no matter how much we sing to bring people together, it's still a cry from what it should be. Time fault, BTs, Cairo clouds, all this serves to cut us off from the rest of creation, and I have to say, I don't think it's ever going to change. Even people like me and my partner, we have our limits. But now I've met someone who has none. Someone who could save the world from this madness, make it whole again, put our shattered pieces together. Huh. Oh yeah. Can I... <laughs> well, let me do it. Okay. Well, I guess this can go in here. And all this can go in here until I cannot use it. So what? I've got to go all the way back to... Oh, great. Find a oh good lord, what do you want me to do about that then? Do I have to go all the way back to South to Mama? Great. I don't know how to do that. Hey look at that, it's a heart. Oh that's so nice. Hmm. Maybe I could just leave and somebody will talk to me. Have a sure that about that. Just go outside. Um, excuse me, does anybody want to help me? Oh my god, you seem to be having some problems. Weapons restrictions. Let's 
And y'all gonna do y'all gonna do something about that, right? So what do I go? Do I have to really go all the way back to Mama? You there. Scan. Sure, sure they do. No, I don't care about you. Oh, God. Oh, wait, what? I should have actually read that. <laughs> I saw go talk to Mama, and I'm like, do I really have to go? Okay, what do you got me? How easy will this get me back to Mama's lab? I need to learn to read more. It's just, most of the time it's petty problems, and I'm just like, ugh. Like, I'm like, ugh, right now with this. Like, God, really? What do you got for me? I mean, okay, fine. I don't know how this is gonna help me, but sure. This is just a ladder, some climbing anchors. Let me actually just... All right, so. So, um. Well, that doesn't seem bad. We just gotta get to Mama's lab. It's just down there. I guess that's not so bad. Well, um, when we return, we will be back at Mama's lab. And, uh, hopefully figure out what we can do. Until next time, on this grand adventure.